<laughs> After 49 days away from home, seven weeks of uncertainty, there was nothing I needed more than this. <laughs> My only child, so brave and resilient during a time that's got to be confusing when you're just six years old. My husband and I captured it on video so we can show him someday and explain how our family, like so many around the world, has navigated this pandemic. The health worries, the school closures, the quarantines that have upended life as we know it and altered what the world may look like moving forward when it's all over. For us, it started late January when I traveled to Wuhan in China's Hubei province to report on what was still then a mystery virus. The streets here are unusually quiet. Then the lockdown in Wuhan meant a scramble for us to leave. We're packing up and we're heading out and marked the beginning of a story that has since spread across the globe, with the number of cases and deaths rising daily. In China, drastic measures restricted daily life for hundreds of millions of people. While in Wuhan, hospitals were overrun, medical staff overwhelmed, the sick segregated in treatment centers like the ones that are opening in the U.S. Our life moved indoors and online. Outside time spent mostly alone, with other parents too anxious to let kids play together. Do you miss your friends? Yep. When, when, when was the last time you saw your friends? Never. Good morning. There are hundreds of Americans on this cruise ship waiting. By mid-February, I left home next? to cover the coronavirus crisis in Japan while trying and often failing to figure out a plan for the family. When I finally returned to China, it meant 14 days of quarantine. Like many countries, the borders have tightened here to prevent the virus from being re-imported. To get official permission to isolate at home, Hi. my husband and son had to stay somewhere else, though they found an alley from where they could wave and I could at least see them. I have this notice saying that I can't leave the apartment for 14 days. Behind every live interview is a phone, a laptop, a blender. During quarantine, I hacked together a home studio to begin to report on the changes here over two months into the crisis. Across China, signs of a country coming to life. And in Wuhan, the city is no longer a ghost town. Businesses are reopening. Here in Beijing, streets that only weeks ago were deserted, now busy with traffic. Schools are still closed. International flights are cut and foreigners are banned from entering. Life here is not yet back to normal. <laughs> but for one family, my family, it at least feels more complete. <sighs> okay, Janice, I, I, don't, I don't know how you're sitting there not sobbing. We can't keep it together. We can't, but will you tell us <laughs> what it was like? I mean, that moment was one that you'll never forget. Describe it for us. In a word, it was electric uh, to see them and to, to feel them. It, uh, it was a long time coming, and, and it made it that much harder to leave the house today just to come to work. Uh, and he said to me, he said, um, he said, you know, Mommy, that was a lot of days that you were away. And I said, yeah, it was. He goes, let's not do that again, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and and I, said, <laughs> I said, okay, and I agreed with him. Because um, there are still a lot of things that are strange here for, for a kid to try to process. Uh, I mean, he knows there are germs. He knows that's why schools are closed and can't go to a movie theater, can't go to the playgrounds. Um, there, there are some signs of China trying to, to get the economy back on track and to move to, toward a, a more uh, a newer state of normal. But there are also a lot of questions about how real uh, the virus recovery is so far mm -hmm. here uh, and a lot of concerns about triggering a, a second wave of infection. So there, there are still some restrictions that are in place uh, more than two months into this crisis. Uh, and, and for me, in my case, I, I do very much have a stay at home order uh, that mm -hmm. I need to abide by. Janice, I, I'm going to put a picture up that you shared with us <laughs> of one of your FaceTime chats with a oh. little boy where he's just kissing that phone to kiss you. And I I just want to say to him and to yeah. you, on behalf of all of your colleagues, your yeah. proud colleagues here at NBC, thank you. Yep. Thank you for your coverage and your mm -hmm. courage and yep. being there and being there early on. And mm -hmm. it's a sacrifice and we know it. And you are yeah. a pro and we are grateful.
to you and your family. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Janice. Thank you. I'm humbled. Thank you. I'm uh, glad they're back together. Oh, thank my you. gosh. And you, you're right. You can tell how she doesn't even like talking about herself. No. Like, I know it's hard. She's not used to it. Yeah, she's, she's not, not used, used to, to it. it. But Janice, you're just going to have yeah. to because seeing you and yeah. your little boy together just does yeah. our hearts such good. Thank so, you. Man. Bless you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you Janice. so much. All thank right. You. Uh, Let's get a check yes. of the weather, Al, because yes. I would like to sit here and just cry for a few yes. moments. <laughs> it's just so lovely, Al. I'm, I'm getting, I'm starting to get a little misty because my girl is is in Paris in school and you know couldn't come in, and you know so it's it's a mm -hmm. I, I I I get it. It's and, hard to be a part. Anyway, let's take a look, show you uh, our national map, and. Um, Anyway, uh, we've got some snow in the in the plains. So ocean storm moving off the coast. Gulf Coast looking at uh, some uh, sunshine as well. That's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods.